Well guys, I never thought I'd see the day, but Total Warhammer's DLC is fixed? Now look, I've been pretty vocal about Total Warhammer's absolutely insane DLC system ever since Warhammer 2 came out, and now it's finally been addressed. I can scarcely believe it. It's clearly not just me who's been saying these things obviously, and I doubt that anyone even tangentially related to someone who works at Sega or Creative Assembly even remembers that I exist. But despite that I want to make this video because A credit where credit is due, and B I made an entire video on how this system was broken and very anti-consumer, so I feel like I owe it to both them and you guys to set the record straight with these changes. For those who need a quick refresher, here's how Total Warhammer's DLC system used to work. If you wanted to play the big campaign maps in the form of Mortal or Immortal Empires, you needed to own Warhammer 1 and 2, or Warhammer 1, 2 and 3 respectively. And then you needed to buy any DLC on top of that to play them inside of the campaigns. The wall this put up for people not willing to spend was significant, as the base price for these games and any potential DLC gets very expensive very quickly. It means you couldn't play with your friends if they owned multiple games and you only had one, and it was demoralizing for anyone who came into the series late and were told they'd need to buy an entire other game and a DLC pack if they wanted to play their favorite race from an earlier release, despite them being in the game that they had just bought. But today my friends, all that changes. Yes, with these updates the entire landscape of Total Warhammer is significantly easier to understand, it's cheaper to take part in, and it's much more consumer friendly than it was just a few months ago. So here's the deal. Anyone who owns Warhammer 3 can now play Immortal Empires, which is the mega combined campaign map including content from all three Warhammer games. You don't need to own the earlier games and you don't need to buy anything extra. Immortal Empires is just free for everyone who has Warhammer 3. And that's a fantastic change that was right at the top of my list of suggestions. This means the price of entry is now just one game, and playing with friends is now as easy as, hey do you have Warhammer 3? And the fact that Warhammer 3 is also on Game Pass, Steam, and the Epic Store with full cross store multiplayer makes this even easier. The next big change is to do with the requirement to own the base game of any DLC that you wanted to play. Before, if you wanted to play the Wood Elves for example, which were a DLC pack in Warhammer 1, in Warhammer 2's Mortal Empires map, you also had to own Warhammer 1, even if you had no intention of ever booting it up and never playing as the Empire or the Dwarves or whatever. That requirement is gone. Any piece of DLC can now be bought directly for and be accessed within Warhammer 3. Want to play the Tomb Kings but don't care about the Lizard Men or the Elves? Just buy the DLC and skip Warhammer 2 and it's in Warhammer 3. Simple as. This gets even better with the fact that most base game factions are available via the cheaper Lord Packs. So if you want to play the Empire for example but don't feel like shelling out for the base game, you can get involved through the Grim and the Grave DLC, or the Hunter and the Beast DLC for much cheaper. You'll be limited to the Lords the respective packs come with, but that's a fair compromise. Access to two new races for just 15 bucks base price is a pretty great deal I reckon, and that's not a sentiment I thought I'd ever hold for anything related to Total Warhammer. And there's a really great ownership guide for this in the Immortal Empires FAQ if you want to know more. These updates are massively impactful and they make me feel so much better about recommending Total Warhammer to people, especially if they're new to the series. It's now a much simpler answer compared to before where you'd have to drop the inevitable, yeah I mean the game's good, but the DLC is… But still the question remains, are Sega and Creative Assembly still peddling some bullshit out there? I mean yeah of course they are, it's Sega and Creative Assembly. For one thing, I'm disappointed that there's nothing to address the pricing structure. Buying all this stuff is expensive, and for most people it's prohibitively expensive. I would have loved to see some sort of bulk discount applied, especially since the base prices of Warhammer 1 and 2 are still unchanged at 100 New Zealand dollars. Maybe a system where if you bought a certain amount you could get 10% off all future purchases, or if you bought 3 or more pieces at once it could be 25% off. Or maybe there's bundles you could buy, say get all of Warhammer 2's DLC content for less than buying it all individually. 
Now admittedly yes you can just wait for the next Skulls event or franchise sale like what's going on right now, though that always felt silly to me as a response to um it's too expensive, but at least it's something. Right now for example almost everything is half off which is nice, I just bought a few DLC packs that I was missing along with the entirety of Warhammer 3's offering so I can begin playing it for a potential video. I didn't even start crying after I saw the price, can you believe it? Those are really the only complaints I have. Um, okay, actually, wait, no, there is one more complaint, and it is hot off the press, as in today, hours ago. Creative Assembly, Sega, what the hell is this pricing? Nearly 50 bucks for a single faction pack? This is almost double the amount of what Warhammer 2's counterparts cost, and it's over double for the Ogre Kingdoms, which is Warhammer 3's other faction pack available right now. 50 bucks? What are you guys smoking over there? It's half the price of the base game, good lord. Look, I really don't know what else to say here, I hope this isn't the price we're going to have to pay for an overall improvement to the DLC system, and it does seem like this will be one of, if not the biggest faction pack that Creative Assembly have ever released, with 26 units and 3 legendary lords and a legendary hero or something, but man this pricing sucks and it puts quite a damper on this whole video to be honest, I was really disappointed to see it. As someone in the comments of the announcement on reddit wisely said, we paradox now. Right, but looking beyond that if we can, these DLC system changes overall are a massive W, and I do want to commend Sega and Creative Assembly for implementing them. Could they have announced all this earlier, before the Immortal Empires beta, where people probably bought some unnecessary games to unlock some DLC? Uh, I mean yeah, they probably could have, and yeah that probably did happen to a few people, but you know, we can't win them all. So with all that said, does that mean I'll be reviewing Warhammer 3? While I didn't say it specifically in the previous video I made on this topic, I did have in my mind that I was kind of soft boycotting the series until the DLC got a rework, I just couldn't be bothered. But with this update I am glad to say they've done what I didn't think would ever happen, and as such I will be making a very very in-depth review video on Warhammer 3. Will it be anytime soon? No. No it won't. I plan for this to be, like I said, very in depth, and I want to spend some time with whatever comes else with the 3.0 patch, along with the Chaos Dwarves which I will resentfully probably have to buy for the video. I also need to like play the normal game and play all the races from all the three games, and the campaigns, and all the new game modes, so yeah I'm thinking like end of this year? Probably like a Warhammer 3 two years later kind of deal? Anyway, that's for the future, and thanks for watching the video today. Consider joining these legends by becoming a patron or joining through YouTube memberships, if you'd like to support me directly. That's Aero, Krizzy218, George Rain, Jack Walsh, Nutty Jawa, Overlord Jebus, T Edits, Crispy Rubber Chicken, XB204, Benjamin Howard, David, Cynical Cheddar, thanks for upgrading from Scout mate, Sebastian Baran, who's also new, thank you, Takayo, David Deboli, Wintendo, Bad Ghosts, Sean Weber, Grey Spirit4, also new, Peter John Bushnell, also new, thank you so much. We're going to have to make a new display here because we're running out of room. Not a bad problem to have. And of course, thanks so much to me Paladins, that's Johnny Woof, Strategia, and Eric. Much appreciated guys, I can't thank you enough. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.